All right, thanks, guys. The Jets take on the Browns, 820 Eastern kickoff in Cleveland. The Browns were 3.5 down to 3. Total was 40 down to 39. Cleveland's 170 on the money line. Nickel moved toward the Browns in the early going here. The Jets are 1-1 ATS for the year thus far. 1-0 ATS on the road. 1-0 ATS as the dog. Cleveland, on the other hand, has obviously struggled against these Jets in the past couple of seasons. 0-5 straight up in their last five versus the Jets. 0-5 ATS in those five against New York as well. Now, the Browns also failed to cover in four out of their last five matchups with New York in their home stadium in Cleveland. Now, total-wise, both teams are 1-1 one one to the under so far on the season. Meanwhile, for all those uh, Browns fans out there, you really haven't seen much scoring in the past few years. Just 3-11 and 11 to the over in their last 14 at home. So with all that said and done, I just can't put my hard-earned money on the Browns. I got to take the Jets plus the points. Give me the New York Jets plus 3 and the under 39 in this one. And with that said, I just want to welcome you to the show. I got some lines and personal leans out for NFL Week 3, the early slate of games. But before we get into that, I just want to remind you to check out my daily best play at patreon.com slash Brock Page. And with a documented win percentage of 60% for the entire year of 2017, you're costing yourself valuable information each and every day you're not subscribed. Packages begin at just $1.99 a month. There's also plenty of free content there as well. So once again, please feel free to hit that pause button right now. Open up your browser and just quickly check me out at patreon.com slash Brock Page. It'll only take you a few seconds. Link is in the description section below. And if you're a current patron of mine and you're watching this program right now, I just can't thank you enough. You make it all worth it. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at our NFL Week 3 slate of NFL games and personal leans. That's going to be the early slate and all starts our Eastern Standard Time. And on deck, we've got Bengals, Panthers, uh, 1 o'clock Carolina, the Panthers are 3, total was 42.5 up to 43.5. The Panthers are also 145 on the money line, actually a 35-cent fade of Carolina to win it outright. When it comes to this Carolina squad, very banged up at the moment. They're also taking on a Cincinnati squad who's 2-0 and straight up, uh, uh, 2-0 straight up and against the spread on the year. Now this high-powered Cincy's, uh, Cincinnati offense, led by a slew of talented skilled players, or averaging 34 points per game. And if you're into trends, since he's 4 1 ATS in their last five games dating back to last season, they've also successfully covered the number in four out of their last five away from home. Now, scoring wise, the total has gone over in seven out of Carolina's last 10, since he's also gone 2 0 to the over so far for the year, averaging 57 total combined points per contest. So, with all that said and done, I got to ride with the hot hand. Give me the Cincinnati Bengals plus three and the over 43 and a half in this one. Next game, Giants, Texans, one o'clock Houston. The Texans were three and a half all the way up to the six and a half point favorites. Total was 42 down to 41 even. Houston's laying 250 on the money line. That's a 50 cent move toward the Texans. It certainly looks like the Giants have regressed despite making some really good offseason moves. The G-Men are 0-2 on the season, 0-2 against the spread as well. New York's averaging just 14 points per contest. They've also struggled to get the job done away from home. Just 1-4 and four ATS in their last five ball games on the road. The G-Men have also won uh, just one game straight up uh, since November 19th, 2017. Meanwhile, on the other side, not that much more impressive on the Houston side of things, although they're averaging 19 points of scoring per game, which is a lot better than the Giants. Houston's also 15-8 and eight straight up at home in their past couple of seasons. Pretty good at home there. Now, total-wise, if you're a Giants fan, you just haven't seen a ton of scoring in their contests as of late. 8-1 to the under in their last nine. 5-1 to the under in their last six on the road. Meanwhile, on the Texans side of things, they've gone 2-0 and to the under so far in the year themselves. So with all that said and done, we could potentially be looking at another 20-13 to game for the G-Men. But overall, I got to side with the Houston Texans getting the job done. I'm going to purchase the hook, buy it down, and take Houston minus six and the under. 41 points in this one. Next game, Titans-Jaguars, 1 o'clock Jacksonville. The Jags are the six and a half point favorites in this one. Totals 39 and a half. Could get a little wet in this one. 88 degrees and a 50% chance of rain at game time. Seven mile an hour wind toward the eastern boundary. Jacksonville's 2-0 straight up 
on the season. 2-0 ATS on the year as well. They're 4-1 ATS in their last five games. 4-1 ATS in their last five at Everbank Field. The Jags have also been dominant at home playing the Titans. 6-1 ATS in their last seven playing at home against Tennessee. Meanwhile, on the Titans side of things, they're 0-1 against the spread in their lone game away from home this season. They've also struggled to cover the number against this Jacksonville squad in recent years. Just 4-11 ATS in their 15 head-to-heads. 2-5 straight up playing in Jacksonville. Tennessee's also been riddled with injuries. You should know who they are if you're watching the show right now. And total-wise, the total's gone under in six out of Jacksonville's last eight games playing at home against Tennessee. So with all that said and done, I got to ride with the Red Hot Jags in this spot here. I'm also going to purchase the hook, buy it down, and take Jacksonville minus six in the under. 39 and a half points in this one. Next game, Broncos-Ravens. One o'clock, Baltimore. Uh, the Ravens were three and a half up to five. Totals 43. Baltimore's 225 to win it outright. Uh, Baltimore's one and one on the year. One and one ATS as well. They struggled a bit on defense last week, allowing 34 points to the Cincinnati Bengals. That said, though, they're still averaging 35 points of scoring per game. Five and one straight up in their last six at home. Baltimore's also historically played Denver well in the past couple of years. 8-4 and four ATS in their last 12 facing the Broncos. 5-1 and one ATS in their last 6 in the Inner Harbor. Meanwhile, on the Denver side of things, they're 0-2 ATS on the year despite their 2-0 straight-up record. And even though there's no such thing as a bad win, Denver did garner themselves victories over the winless Seahawks and the winless Raiders so far in the season. Now, total-wise, 4-1 to the over in these teams' last five head-to-head matchups. Baltimore's also gone 2-0 to the over thus far on the season, 5-2 to the over in their last seven, dating back to last season. And once again, the Ravens are averaging 35 a game, Denver's 24 a game. This total seems inauspiciously low to me. So with all that said and done, give me the Baltimore Ravens minus five and the over 43 points in this one. Next game, Saints-Falcons, 1 o'clock Atlanta. The Falcons were minus 4, now just minus 3. Total was 54.5, down to 53 even. Atlanta's $1.65 to win it outright. We've got Devontae Freeman still out with a knee for Atlanta. The Falcons are also 1-1 on the season, 1-1 ATS as well. They are 1-0 against the spread in their lone game at home. That was an outright win and cover over the Carolina Panthers. Atlanta's also been great against the number at home as of late. 5-1 and one ATS in their last six, dating back to last season. The Falcons are also 4-2 and two ATS in their last six when playing at home against New Orleans. And speaking of New Orleans, what in the world is going on down there in the bayou? 1-1 one one on the year, but should have dropped that last one to the Browns. Uh, didn't play them very well, but a win's a win, I guess. But the Saints have also been terrible against the number as of late. Just 1-4 ATS in their last five going back to last season. They're also just 1-4 straight up in their last five away from home. If they're going to get their second win on the season this Sunday, they're certainly going to have to do some things differently. Now, total-wise, we are starting to see some buyback toward the direction of the over. Now, that line has moved downward, but we could potentially see it move up again. That said, though... As bad as this New Orleans defense has been, the Saints are 7-2 to the under in their last nine playing in Atlanta. And on the Falcons' side of things, they're 8-1 to the under in their last nine in general, 6-2 to the under in their last eight at home. So with all that said and done, I really do like a play on the Falcons. I still think they're a top-tier team in the NFC. So give me the Atlanta Falcons minus three in the under. 53 even in this one. Next game, 49ers, Chiefs, 1 o'clock east. The Chiefs were 4.5, now 6.5. Total uh, was 52.5 all the way up to 56 even. KC's 275 for some money line cash, a 30-cent move toward the Chiefs to get the job done. KC's 2-0 on the season, 2-0 against the spread as well. Meanwhile, on the other side, San Fran's failed to cover the spread in their two games on the year thus far themselves. Marquise Goodwin is questionable this Sunday with a quad. KC's also banged up on defense themselves. No need to tout the praises of Pat Mahomes in this Chiefs offense. Everybody knows it. If you're already watching me right now, you obviously are aware 
and know your X's and O's. Now, KC's averaging 40 points a game. They're 4-2 and two ATS in their last six at Arrowhead, 5-2 and two ATS in their last seven against San, uh, San Fran. The Niners have also struggled in their games at Arrowhead, just 1-4 and four straight up in their last five games in Kansas City. Now, total-wise, I realize that we've seen nothing but points scored out of both of these teams. A lot of points, little defense. I get that. Just keep in mind that the total has gone under in four out of San Fran's last five games away from home. And for some reason, you just don't get a whole lot of points in Arrowhead Stadium. KC's 5-0 and to the under in their last five games in KC. We've seen this line move nearly four points upward. I really want to be contrarian in this spot here. So all that said and done, I will take the Kansas City Chiefs minus six after buying the hook. But I am also going to take the under 56 total combined points in this one. Next game, Green Bay, Washington, 1 o'clock east. The Packers are the 2.5 point favorites in this one. Total was 47.5 down to 45.5. The Packers are 145 to win it outright. Nickel fade of the pack on the money line despite taking a little money on the spread. Now we might see a little weather in the nation's capital. 69 with a 60% chance of rain at game time. Four-mile-an-hour win toward the north end zone. Green Bay hasn't lost yet this year. 1-0-1 on the season. 1-1 against the spread as well. They've also had pretty good success moving the ball despite Rodgers' bum knee. 27 points on average per game in weeks one and two. Green Bay has also done a real good job handling Washington in recent years. 8-2 and two ATS versus the Skins in their last 10 meetings. Meanwhile, the Skins looked absolutely lost last week. They're 1-1, one one, but that lone win came against the Cardinals who scored one touchdown through two weeks. Missed the extra point, by the way. Anyway, Washington's lost six of eight straight up in their last eight matchups with Green Bay. Now, total-wise, Green Bay's 2-0 to the over on this season. The Packers are also 7-1 to the over in their last eight. These teams also went 4-2 to the over in their last six head-to-head matchups. So with all that said and done, I'm going to purchase the hook, buy it down, And take Green Bay, minus two in the over. 45 and a half in this one. Next game, Colts-Eagles, one o'clock Philadelphia. The Eagles are minus six. Total was 48 and a half, down to 47 and a half. The Birds are 270 for some money line cash. Nickel move toward the Eagles. Phillies one and one on the year. One and one ATS in those two games as well. Carson's back this week. I'm sure you knew that. Both teams are incredibly injured. Peters is questionable at OT for Philly. Sproles has a hammy. Wallace and Alshon are both out. Meanwhile, Indy's interiors are a little banged up as well. Costanzo's questionable at OT. Autry's questionable on the uh, defensive side of things. But the one thing I do know, these Eagles are very good against the number at home. 8-2 ATS in their last 10 at the link. 12-1 straight up in their last 13 in South Philly. That lone loss coming in Week 17 last year versus the third string. Now, Indy's no slouch either, but I think they're incredibly overmatched on the interior with Philly's incredible rotation of defensive linemen. The total's also gone under in five out of Philly's last six at home. Carson could potentially be a bit rusty. I'm not looking uh, for a ton of points this week. I do think the Eagles should be able to pull it out by at least a score. Real tough to win at the link these past couple of seasons. So give me the Eagles minus six and the under 47 and a half in this one. All right, next game, Raiders-Dolphins, 1 o'clock Miami. The Dolphins were three, now three and a half. Total was 44 and a half. Always going in the wrong direction. Down to 44 flat. The Dolphins are $1.65 on the money line. That's actually a 10-cent fate of Miami to win it outright, despite taking a little money on the spread. I'm thinking Miami's the real deal uh, here. Uh, 2-0 on the year, 2-0 ATS as well. They're putting up 24 points a game. And overall, it's just tough to come to the East Coast and play at 10 in the morning if you're a West Coast team. Now, Miami's also had very good success against this Oakland team in recent years. 5-0 and ATS in their last five, depending on where you shopped at. 5-1 and straight up in their last six with the Raiders as well. Oh, there it is. Meanwhile, on the Oakland side, are we on the cusp of a dumpster fire? Well, maybe not considering the Rams definitely are contenders. It looks like the Broncos might win a few games as well. Those are the teams that beat Oakland. Uh, Having said that, though, this anemic Oakland offense 
is putting up just 16 points in their last two, and once again, failed to cover the spread in both weeks one and two thus far. And believe it or not, Oakland hasn't tasted victory since December 17th of last year against the Giants. Even worse, historically, the Raiders are just 2-5 and five against the spread in their last seven while playing in Miami. They've also dropped seven of their last nine straight up in Miami as well. Now, when it comes to the points, we haven't seen a whole lot of them in these Oakland games. 0-2 oh, to the over on the year. 0-5 oh, to the over in their last five. Meanwhile, on the Miami side, we're looking at just 2-4 and four to the over in their last six themselves. So with all that said and done, I got to go with the red hot hand here. Give me the Miami Dolphins minus three after buying the hook and the under 44 total points in this one. And I am going to slide in my next and final game for the show for the early slate of NFL week three. And that is going to be Bills Vikings, one o'clock Minnesota. The Vikings were 16 and a half, now 17. Total was 38 and a half, now 41. Minnesota's $15 on the money line. Look for them to be used in the ever popular money line parlay this weekend. Minnesota's undefeated. Buffalo's winless. Buffalo's scoring 11 points a game. Minnie's averaging 27. Shady McCoy's questionable with ribs. Taiwan Jones, his backup, has a head injury. Shaq Lawson's got a hammy. That's just to name a few for Buffalo. The Bills are losing by 28 points on average per game this season. They've covered just seven of their last 22 away from home the past couple of seasons. All in all, the trends do not support a play on Buffalo plus the points. Meanwhile, on the Minnesota side of things, they're a kicker away from being 2-0. Regardless, though, this team has been an excellent covering team as of late. 10-5 ATS last 15, 16-5 ATS last 21 at home. The Vikings are also 5-0 straight up in their last five at U.S. Bank Stadium. All stats obviously going into last season. Now, total-wise, this is a real tough spot because I want to lay the 17, but I also want this one to stay under the total too. Minis 4-1 to the under in their last five at home. Buffalo's averaging just 139 yards a game through the air. So with all that said and done, it's got to be a ridiculous lean, but I got to make it. Give me the Minnesota Vikings minus 17 and the under 41 in this one. All right, folks, that is going to do it for me in my NFL week three early slate of games and personal leans. The late games video will be released Wednesday morning. I look forward to seeing you then. All right, folks, that is going to do it for me. But before I get out of here, I just have to remind you to check out my daily best play at patreon.com slash Brock Page. And with a documented win percentage of 60% for the entire year of 2017, you're costing yourself valuable information each and every day you're not subscribed. Packages begin at just $1.99 a month. There's also plenty of free content there as well. So once again, please feel free to hit that pause button right now. Open up your browser and just quickly check me out at patreon.com slash Brock Page. It'll only take you a few seconds. Link is in the description section below. And if you're a current patron of mine and you're watching this program right now, I just can't thank you enough. You make it all worth it. And as always, thank you for watching today's program. I hope you enjoyed all this great free information. And please don't forget to check out my daily best play at patreon.com slash Brock Page.